Well, looks like another episode of The Walking Dead has come and gone. Yes, The Lost and The Plunderers, or The Plundered, something along those lines. Anyway, uh, somewhat better than its predecessor, uh, and, uh, and nice and short, <laughs> which, which uh, really ruined the previous episode. Of course, I'm still mourning for uh, poor Carl, uh, which will be driving the rest of the show, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, uh, some significant performances, uh, which, uh, for the most part, tend to be good, despite the uh, terrible writing that's been going on over the past two seasons up to now, uh, which somewhat continues. But this show uh, could have been okay in one of the better seasons. You wouldn't have noticed it as much. <laughs> uh, but, you know, again, that's some terrible things have happened uh, as far as the quality of The Walking Dead, and it's a pale shadow of its former self. But anyway, the best part about this show is the trash heap people are no more. <laughs> I did not like this part of the show. Their edition was over the top and stupid, and they're gone. But, oh, I'm worried here. I'm really worried, uh, because Jadis, the leader, survived. And, uh... Oh, she gives this uh, reveal that, uh, you know, they were a bunch of artists and they were weird to begin with. So, hey, that explains what they were trying to do and all that sort of thing. Well, yeah, it got that early on, so it didn't really matter. But nevertheless, uh, what I'm worried about is, uh, and this may be a bit of a spoiler, if you only watch the TV show, if you follow the comic book series, you know that after the Negan War, there's another sinister threat on the horizon. Uh, yeah, they're called the Whisperers, and they're led, uh, uh, it's just kind of like a cult, and they're led by a woman who calls herself Alpha. And yes, they're weird, and they have their bizarre code, uh, not exactly the same as what the trashy people uh, presented themselves as, but it's pretty much the same thing. So I guess they thought they were being clever by introducing... Uh, this cult, uh, or whatever you call it, uh, gang, uh, early, which well, it's not the same gang, I guess. Now they're all vanquished and then reintroduce her later as having had some kind of origin that took place before you. I I'm hoping not, but <laughs> I'm afraid that's exactly what's going to happen. Now the whisperers, uh, the way they were introduced, they had an interesting thing where, uh, they disguise themselves as walkers. They take the skin of walkers and they wear it like uh, like masks and what have you. And, of course, this goes along with the idea of what you've seen earlier in the show is that, well, if you cover yourself in the rotting blood and guts of walkers, <laughs> the walkers don't know you're human and they leave you alone. Well, same thing here with how they move around these uh, whisperers. And uh, for a while, the way it's introduced was interesting because they, people began to suspect that the walkers could actually talk now. Uh, and of course, no, it was a trick and all that. But anyway, the whole point is, yes, another sinister group for Rick and friends to take on. And of course, there was this whole romantic story for Carl and a girlfriend from that group. Uh, well, that's gone, so I don't know what they're going to do with that. Maybe they'll introduce a boy for Enid to fall in love with, and that's how they'll do the story. I don't know. But uh, that's where uh, that seems to be going, and it's no good. Uh, there's a few little interesting tidbits here and there in that story, but the comic book really has gone off the deep end, too, with really bad characters uh, specifically one, I am dreading the day they're going to introduce the princess character. <laughs> if you read the comic book series, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that's just going to be awful. So, uh, yeah, I'm afraid that's who Jadis will be. Uh, she'll have to shave her head, which a lot of people didn't like her haircut to begin with, but, uh, I didn't really care one way or the other. I just thought the whole group was stupid with their Yoda talk and all that stuff. Uh, just, you know, uh, it's, it's just another sign of the writers flailing around, not knowing what to do, uh, with this show. So, uh, uh so yeah, that was great. <laughs> At least I got to see the end of those. Uh, but the problem is another thing that they screw around with plot and what have you. So you have, uh, Simon becomes an interesting character here a little bit in, in a, a believable sense of like some of the lieutenants of Negan are going to get tired of this crap, especially, 
uh, Negan suddenly goes soft in order to maintain order and stuff. But of course, if Negan hadn't been so harsh in the first place, this probably wouldn't have happened. There wouldn't have been the war. And now he's doing a 180 somewhat uh, about, you know, don't kill so many, Simon. And Simon's had it. You know, so many of his guys are gone and stuff. And so he's questioning Negan's uh, leadership and uh, possibly uh, threatening and challenging it. Uh, but I suspect eventually Negan will probably just kill him. But uh, anyway, he sent over the deal with the trash heap people and uh, warned them not to betray them again and pick up their guns and all that. And, and Negan says, well, you can kill one to send them a signal. you know. And so he does, but then he kills another one. He's wanting uh, Jadis to uh, beg for mercy and all that, and uh, she's not doing it. And then she uh, fights him. And well, that's it. He's had enough. And so they slaughter the whole group <laughs> and all that. So Jadis is left alive and she's surrounded by the zombified uh, remains of her, her crew there. And then Rick and Michonne show up and they're like, holy crap, they're all dead and zombies. And then there's Jadis. And hey, what happened? You know, now the saviors killed them all. And uh, so then Rick and Michonne have to figure out how to get out. And Rick makes a makeshift shield out of a, a car door and all that stuff. And it's all fine and good. And then uh, Jade is, like, oh, take me with you and all that, you know, and then, screw you, bitch. This is all you're doing. And then Rick uh, and Michelle and hightail it out of there. And then uh, it almost looks like Jadis is surrounded and she can't make it. But of course she does. And then, well, it turns out she's got a, a big uh, trash uh, grinder machinery. <laughs> and she leads the zombies into it and grinds them up into grind meat. <laughs> she really put out the trash. <laughs> Um, but the problem there is, is she, she knew this all along, <laughs> so she didn't need Rick. She didn't need Michonne or anything. Uh, why make it look like she's so desperate? I guess you could argue that she's earlier made it known that she has this attraction for Rick and, uh, she was hoping Rick would take her in and all that sort of thing. And now that rejection is probably going to fuel her uh, her desire for vengeance against Rick later when she becomes Alpha. Yeah, that's... Oh. <laughs> so anyway, she that's the end of the trash heap people. She grinds them all up in a big pile of ground beef. <laughs> that's it. Um, so, but still, I think that's a bit of a mistake plot-wise. I mean, it's obvious she could get out anytime she wanted anyway uh so they move on there simon demonstrates uh some interesting aspects there which you could expect to come it's just the problem is overall for walking dead is that seen this before you've seen the bad guy lose control of his group and all that sort of thing and uh, so uh rick confronts uh negan via walkie talkie and informs him that carl is dead uh, Negan is uh, a bit upset about that. He liked Carl. Uh, but then, of course, uh, he goes on about how it's all Rick's fault and everything. And uh, But, oh, this is a classic turn of event of lines, isn't it? Where, uh, who are you trying to convince, Negan? Rick or yourself? <laughs> so, uh, Rick, you know, he's not having any of this. Uh, Please, Dad, become a pacifist and make peace with Negan. No, Carl. Uh, he intends to kill him. Since this is still going the way the comic book probably, uh, turn, I mean, the way the comic book did turn out, and this is probably going to follow suit on that, he's not going to kill Negan. <clears throat> this is the uh, spoiler from the comics, which if they're going this way, if you haven't read them, uh, he's not going to kill Negan. No, he's going to lock him up in a prison cell. Yes, that's what he's going to do. Rick will return to his uh, cop roots and become the sheriff <laughs> of the new community that they will build, uh, which is pretty much how the show can end. It's the only way to do it to end, but of course it won't. Uh, they're still milking this cash cow because either you're watching it because you're just accepting all this garbage, you're so in love with it, and you just refuse to see the obvious, or you're an idiot like me. <laughs> Who's stuck here <laughs> just screaming and clawing at a once great show that I really miss. And all I've got is this terrible shell. But this episode, before and better uh, than most, 
Uh, there's some stupid things. Oh, uh, at the beginning, of course, they're still mourning uh, Carl's death and everything. So uh, Rick and Michonne, they're all sad, and the zombies are coming in, the walkers, are, whatever. And they're coming in, and Michonne, oh, boy, we got to go. So Rick, yeah, okay. They pack up a few things. Uh, they load up the, 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 what was it, the truck or whatever. And they're getting ready to leave. And then she sees the old gazebo, and it's on fire, and she... No, she can't stand it. She she drives an extinct fire extinguisher. Uh, walkers everywhere. Uh, so what does Rick do? He grabs another fire extinguisher, and they both go over there to try to. <laughs> it's stupid. Now you say, oh well, they're blind with grief and they don't know what they're doing and all that. Okay, yeah, but the chances are pretty good they would have all gotten bitten. Uh, it was extremely stupid, and after what they've been through, uh, they're veterans at grief and loss by now. And this just isn't believable. The The powerfulness of the loss and grief, it was demonstrated in other manners, which they did. You know, Rick discusses with Sean, what do you think, you know, Carl meant and all this stuff. And also the moment where she, uh, Michonne, sees uh, palm prints that uh, Carl and uh, Judith had made with some paint on the porch of the little house they had. And uh, those things, are that demonstrates uh, the grief that they're going through and it's right there and it's a heartbreaking moment and stuff. This over, uh, over the top nonsense of putting, uh, putting out a burning down gazebo. That's, it's already too late. I mean, I, that, that's enough of that. Uh, you, you didn't need any of that. Uh, that's all the stupidity still worms its way into a show that all in all was sort of okay. <sighs> Boy. So uh, just on that, I am willing to give this particular episode three out of five stars. Now, in comparison to when it was a great show, it would have gotten a zero. <laughs> but as it is now, due to the lowering of standards, <laughs> thanks to the past two seasons. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and give this one three out of uh, five gold stars. So there you go. Uh, the Walking Dead, uh, apparently not quite dead yet, <laughs> still struggling along, uh, limping along as it were, and uh, well, I guess we'll just see where it goes. I mean, what the hell, why not <laughs> come this far? <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for uh, listening and watching. Uh, please do like and, and subscribe uh, and uh, check the uh, links below for my little stores that have lots of goodies for you. And also take a look at this advertisement for just such goodies. Say, friends, check out Nelson Theater at selfie.com slash Nelson. Yes, there you'll find my poor man mystery science theater treatment of public domain movies that really deserve the treatment. Yes, you can head over there and check out the links to my trailers to such films on my YouTube channel. Yeah, you can preview them and then head over back to selfie.com slash Nelson and purchase yourself some Mr. Nelson treatments of movies. I'll be right there to guide you through it.